we've mounted a wind turbine to the front of my old truck to see how much power is available and what effect it might have on the fuel consumption. Now, in part one, we built this silly hand fan to help us understand relative wind and why turbine blades are twisted along their length. And now we're gonna learn how to calculate exactly how much power is available in the wind in front of the truck. And then we're gonna drive around and actually measure the output of this to see how it compares and how closely it matches the factory specs. Now, if you're the kind of person who wants to puke at the side of math, I need you to check out this formula out of my wind power textbook. You see what I see? Well, hang in there. I promise the math will be over before you even start to gag. Now, the calculation for the power available in the wind is actually really simple. All you need to know is the density of the air, the area of the turbine, and the velocity of the wind. And if you plug that in for this turbine, you get about 900 watts. But this thing's rated for less than half of that. And the reason might surprise you. If wind blows through a turbine with no change in speed, then we haven't harvested any power. For the turbine to make electricity, the air has to slow down. But if it captured all the wind's power, the air would stop completely, leaving no room for new air to enter the turbine. In fact, we can see this effect with our anemometer. As soon as we start blocking the air that's coming out the turbine, it starts to slow down. And if we block it completely, then the fan stops completely because no more air can enter the turbine blades. So if we can't take all the wind's power, how much can we get? Well, in 1919, a German physicist named Albert Betz set out to answer this question. He visualized wind through a turbine like water moving through a tube. But when the air slows down, the diameter must increase to maintain flow. Betts reasoned that the air is also slowing down in front of the turbine by a factor equal to that behind it. Applying the Bernoulli principle at points along the tube in combination with the equation for thrust on the rotor revealed a new equation for turbine performance. Graphing this equation revealed a peak at precisely 16 27ths or 59.2%. Though other scientists made similar discoveries at the time, this became known as the Betts limit, a theoretical maximum on the power that can be harvested from the wind under the best theoretical conditions. In practice, modern turbines achieve about 80% of the Betts limit. So while it's interesting to calculate the total power available in the wind, I can just imagine Bet stepping in to say something like, I bet you can only get 59% of that. So far we've only been talking about mechanical power of the wind, but if we want to be able to generate electricity, we need to use that power to turn some kind of generator. Now, you might remember from the series on generating power from rain gutters that in part two, we built our own 3D printed alternator from scratch and connected it on the lathe so we could see how it was producing that alternating current. Now, this thing is exactly the same where it's just spinning magnets in front of coils of wire. But whereas that 3D printed alternator was single phase because all of those coils were connected, this thing is three phase. So it's got three different series of coils sort of spread around the diameter of the generator. So what that does is it spreads the forces around and makes the thing run more smoothly, which is great. Now, if we turn on the lathe, we'll be able to see what those phases look like. So we can see here we're connected to one of the phases of this generator and we can see sort of this semi sine wave, it's certainly not perfect, going up and down, up and down as each magnet is going past the coil of wire. And if we turn on another phase, we can see that it's lined up offset from that first phase. Now as I speed it up, we can see how the peaks and valleys of these waves are getting closer together. There's more of them per second, and that makes sense because, of course, the magnets are now spinning faster in front of the coils of wire. Now, we're only connected to two of the phases. If this 
oscilloscope had a third input we could connect and you could see right where that third phase would go. Now the appliances in our homes depend on a nice smooth AC power coming in from the wall with a 50 or 60 cycles per second or 50 or 60 hertz. And if we were to take one of these wind turbines and put it up in a windstorm and try to power something with it, you can imagine how much those cycles per second would fluctuate. So for off-grid power and small power generation, it's really better to just connect this to a rectifier, turn it into DC so it's way more stable and easier to use. So I have it disconnected from the rectifier right now. Let's go ahead and hook that up and then we'll see what it does to the output. Okay, we have everything hooked up like we want it to now. We have the oscilloscope monitoring the output of two of the phases of the alternator slash generator. We have an RPM output showing us how fast the lathe is spinning. We have our rectifier here that's, this is what came with the wind turbine and it has a rectifier circuit set up for all three phases as well as some controls that we'll get into in a second. And we have a power meter here monitoring the voltage and the current and the total power output, charging a battery with, a, uh, with an inverter that then is on, connected to a heater for our load. So we're gonna spin this thing up and watch what happens. Okay, so we're around 300 RPM, 400 RPM. I'll turn on that second phase here. So we can see our two phases going. And right now at this 400 something RPM, there's still no load on this. It is spinning up, it's producing voltage. We can see on our, on our meter that we've got over 12 volts. This, was, this is set up for is a 12 volt battery, 12 volt system. We've got a little bit of current, a little bit of power there. I mean, it's, it's really negligible. It's just powering the displays and stuff like that. But this little controller, it's waiting to make sure that this turbine is spinning fast enough that it has enough wind to actually connect to it and start making power. So right now it's really just free spinning. So I happen to know as this thing is getting closer to 500 RPM, it's going to kick in and start trying to do stuff with this power. So let's go ahead and get there, see what happens. Watch those RPMs carefully. Boom, it didn't even make it to 500. And now this sucker, it, it slowed way down below 400 RPM. Now it's actually trying to do something with the power. So let's keep speeding it up a little bit. Get it closer to that 500 RPM. And we're gonna turn on our inverter to actually do something. I mean, right now it's charging the battery, but it, it's not that great a battery. It's not gonna be doing much until we turn on this inverter. And we'll probably get an error, like a low, yeah, it's getting a low voltage uh, chirp from us. So we gotta turn this thing up. There we go. All right, so we're getting close to 800 RPM and we've got our inverter on. And shoot, we've got five amps of current. That's great, 77 watts. So you'll notice that once the inverter turned on, the oscilloscope went crazy. It's seeing all kinds of noise on there. We're not seeing that nice clean output from the, uh, from the generator any, anymore, but that's fine. So what we're gonna do, we're, we're now clearly into the power making part of the, uh, of the wind turbine here that we're able to generate power. It's generating, you know, what, 70 watts. So I wanna see how much power can we actually get out of this thing because the, the label says that it's capable of 400 watts. And we did our calculations and established like, yeah, it should be able to, by the numbers, it should be able to put out 400 watts. But I wanna know, can this thing actually do it? I don't wanna be driving on the road, sitting there, you know, trying to figure out if it can do it or not. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep spinning this thing up and I'm gonna keep changing the load. Now, our load is this heater, this little space heater sitting here. But the problem is with heaters, they come on full and just, you know, it's gonna be pulling like a, a thousand watts or more. And I wanna be able to just run this thing gradually up and down. So what we've done is, yes, this is plugged into the inverter, but it's plugged in through a variable transformer down here. 
So we're going to be able to take this variable transformer and just slowly dial it up and down, which you can see now we were at 5 amps. If I keep dialing it up, well, now it's beeping. I couldn't quite get up to 8 amps. So let's increase the RPM as if we were driving faster or the wind speed was increasing. There's 1100. Now at some point, these, these little wind turbines, even little home ones and, and really big industrial ones, they have protection circuitry built in to keep them from spinning too fast. So at some point, this thing is going to try to engage a brake. It's basically going to short those coils together and just and try to slow down and not be producing any power. So I kind of want to see that happen. I don't know if we'll be able to get there or not. And we'll see, do we hit that 400 watts or do we hit that brake first? That's, that's what kind of the goal is here. So uh, I think I have this all safely clamped down. I guess, I guess we're going to find out. Oh, through a breaker, tripped a breaker. We may not have enough power in our lathe to do this. Oh, we were just coming up on 200 watts. All right, that was kind of scaring me anyway. <laughs> we may just have to wait for the vehicle test to do this. Uh, I'm gonna hit a reset and we'll see if we can do this again. Okay, I've reconfigured everything in here. The lights are running off of a separate outside circuit, I think. And the only thing on these plugs in the shop is the lathe. So let's give this a shot and see what we got. Okay, I've maxed out the lathe. It's uh, coming up on 1500. That's actually what it's supposed to do when it's maxed out. So that's a, that's a good sign that the lathe's doing what it's supposed to do. There's a low and a high speed setting on this thing. So uh, I guess I gotta shut it down and I'll kick the belts over to the higher speed. Now that it seems like that uh, switching over to the other breaker seems to have fixed our, our problem. We'll see if we trip it when we get to the, uh, when we try to run this thing at a higher speed. I gotta tell you, I just changed the belts over. Everything is hot. So, <laughs> granted, this would have wind blowing over the top of it, but it's not like there's a bunch of cooling fins on this thing, but it is it is hot to the touch, as is the motor on the, the lathe down here if I, if I reach down there and touch it. So, um, man, I'm, I'm just going to have to give this thing like a half hour or something to cool. There is, this, is, this is way too hot. I don't want to burn anything up, and uh, then, then we'll give it another shot. All right, things cooled down quite a bit. Oh, look at that thing bogged down. What? You gotta be kidding me. It does not have the torque to get above 500 RPM. I am maxing out this dial and it can't do it. Ah, come on. Okay, what if, I don't really wanna do this, but what if we spin this thing up? What if I unplug the rectifier, get this thing spun up? Cause I bet it could do it. I bet it could do it. Rectifier, unplug. Of course, we're going to lose our ability to see what our RPM is. <laughs> like I said, no load. Look how much faster this thing can go. All right, let's see what happens. I got it at uh, like 1200 RPM. We're going to hook up. Now we just sort of spontaneously connect. Huh? 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 Oh, come on, man. 
All right, we'll slow you back down, or we'll, we'll unplug. We're trying to get into the sweet spot of the motor for this lathe is what we're doing. Okay, that's 1500, that's where we were before. No good. No good. Ah, man. Need to upgrade my lathe. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, uh, well, let's just change the belts real quick. Yeah, unfortunately, I just can't spin it any faster than that. So we're at 1500 RPM and 14 amps, 100, what? I mean, if I bump it up just a hair. We're just gonna have to throw it on the vehicle. And basically, my plan is to replicate this same setup and I'll just have somebody help me with the uh, dialing this thing up and down and monitoring the current coming out of it and there we'll have wind speed and all that good stuff. So we'll be analyzing the, uh, the turbine and the generator portion at the same time. So here we go. Let's go ahead and power that thing on. And then you remember the Variac, right? Yeah. So you're going to, whoa, that was way up. Um, I seem to remember it's going to be quite a ways around before it actually does anything. But so this thing's going to beep out. Uh, if we pull too much a load on it, it's going to beep. And if I'm not going fast enough, it's going to beep. So we're just going to kind of work our way up and, and see what happens. That makes sense. We'll just play with it, and we know the stuff's not going to go perfect. And that's going to be fine. So here we go. We are going to try. Oh, it's starting to spin. Already. coming online <laughs> that should be I think that's the sound of the inverter now right now it should be just like free spinning because we know it has to take like 500 rpm before this thing even even starts to How kick is it in spinning so fast already that's a good question it's got to be just the pitch of the blades whoa it's slowed way down I think this thing is upside down did I pop that in there upside down yeah yep it's upside down <laughs> All right, we'll go back and <laughs> and tweak that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, gotta flip this. Definitely. <laughs> all right, all right, laugh uh, it up. Yeah, I think we better drive out in the country where we can be free to go a little faster yeah. and not have cars directly around us. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, turn that thing off. <laughs> Thank you. Because it just seems to be cycling on and off right now. It'll it'll get fast enough to start trying to grab power, and then it just slows down. Like it can't it can't actually do it. I don't know if that's the might just be the blades, the turbine portion, the blades themselves. They just aren't gonna aren't gonna cut it. No pun intended. All right, we're relocated out to the country where we can go a little faster, fewer pedestrians. Even at 30 miles an hour, what's that gonna be, 12 meters a second? It just, every time it tries, it just dies. I think maybe this turbine is just so bad that no matter what speed we go, it can't generate any power. That is pathetic. We know the generator portion of this thing worked because we've spun it up on the lathe and gotten quite a bit of power out of it. But as soon as we try to drive it with the wind, the thing just isn't working. And I thought at first that it might be a bets limit thing where the front of the truck is limiting the air going through it, but our anemometer is measuring the wind on the downwind side of the blade. So 
we know, I mean, I've, I've watched this thing get over 20 meters per second and it still wasn't putting out any power. So unless there's something horribly wrong electronically on this thing, which I'll certainly look for, uh, the, the blade portion of this thing sucks. <laughs> I was so concerned that driving at highway speeds that this thing would, would spin too fast and fly apart, but no, not at all. I mean, here we are going uh, 40 miles an hour. It's not even doing, it's barely getting up to the, the 500 RPM. So we're gonna bag this thing up and just uh, go, back, go back to the shop and see what we can do. Now, one thing's for sure, this thing doesn't work and we need to know why. So we're cutting into it so we can probe the coils individually and we're gonna use an oscilloscope that can see all three phases at once. Also, we're ordering another turbine of a slightly different model in hopes that we can learn something from how it works. Okay, so the second wind turbine showed up and the blades are actually exactly the same diameter, but that's about where the only similarity is. The new 500 watt one has thicker wires in the generator, which makes complete sense that it's gonna be able to put out more current, so it needs thicker wire to handle it. However, the controller that came with them has smaller wires, which doesn't make any sense. You would think the higher output one would have the thicker wires on its controller, but that is not the case. And lastly, the blades are way different, at least the material. This, I never realized how floppy. I mean, look at this thing. You can just bend it with your fingers, twist it, whatever you wanna do. This new one is super rigid so you can imagine what the force of the wind on this thing is going to do when it's pushing on one that just has this really floppy material and how it it could just flex to match the wind versus this one that's much stiffer i think we should just mount the new one up as is and go for it okay here we are with our 500 watt wind turbine supposedly and we have our tachometer sensor right here for the measuring the RPM. And we've got our anemometer to measure the wind and notice that is behind the turbine. So whatever effect of the change in momentum of the wind is going to be measured by that, we'll just have to assume that the wind in front is represented by the speedometer on the vehicle. So yeah, let's take this sucker for a spin and see if it works all right new turbine we're gonna go for a test fingers crossed i hope this works yeah i don't know the last test 1500 wow man this thing is spinning like mad i can't even see the correct? blades well this is not very promising we're here with the completely new setup and we're going well over the speed that should be able to power that thing. And I mean, shoot, we'll run the turbine up to crazy RPMs. 1500 RPM, and we were doing that on the, on the lathe, and it's still not making, you know, eight volts or something. It's almost like this little inverter, which granted, Hey, we're, we're not shoot we can't even get an amp out of the thing what is I I don't I don't understand I don't understand I'm wondering if we should try switching over to the old controller and see if that does anything if it behaves similarly or what yeah we should try that all right here we go we are using the new turbine old controller see what we get see if it makes any difference at all at all whoa big difference all right go ahead and turn on the inverter Woo! hey we're actually making making some no power beeps. now no way Oh gosh, finally. Oh my goodness. 
finally it's buzzing then we've got power all right I'll go I'll go a little faster here why don't you slowly dial this thing up ever so slightly and I'll focus on keeping us at about 25 miles an hour that 11 12 meters per second and just see how high you can get the watts about 62 okay yeah that's a lot less than four or five hundred all right well I'll speed up now we'll get up I'll go to like 40 miles an hour and we'll do the same thing see how high you can get it well we're over a hundred see how good you can do don't have much time we got another stop coming up I saw it beep 169 Wow so we're able to get over 100 watts but even with the bets limit and all that the, the turbine itself should be able to put out the, the 400 watts should be no problem at whatever uh, the 11 meter per second speed or this you know 20 something miles an hour miles an hour but here we are going 40 miles an hour with almost 20 meters per second and it's still only you know barely putting out over 100 watts so these claims by the turbine manufacturers of these cheap little turbines are way overblown and this this just we're, we're gonna have to do our own thing we're just gonna have to make our own like setup we did, like we did with the rain generator the rain generator exactly like the rain generator so i just noticed something i need to come clean about that second controller specifies a braking voltage, which I mistakenly interpreted for the point at which it starts to make power on the lathe. The truth is I chose such a small battery that the turbine easily hit this braking voltage and tried to stop itself. If you go back and watch, it is plain as day. Every time we hit 14 volts on the lathe, it just slows down dramatically. But I was so attached to this idea of cut-in speed and RPM that I completely missed it. So sorry about that. But here's something strange. As soon as we switched to the new stiffer blades, the problem vanished. In fact, the battery voltage hit 14 and a half several times while we were generating power. My guess is the three-blade turbine is so floppy, as soon as it meets any resistance, it just gives up. And this is evidenced by the fact that the wind speed behind the three blade turbine was almost unchanged, while the speed behind the five blade was much slower than the incoming wind. That indicates it was actually reducing the momentum of the incoming wind. So while in retrospect, I should have used a bigger battery, it doesn't change the conclusion. The two turbines I bought are incapable of delivering on their claims, so buyer beware. Okay, we've got one more thing we can still try. This is the new 500 watt rotor and magnets. This is the old 400 watt rotor and magnets. Do you notice any difference? The magnets are thicker and stronger on this thing. I haven't measured the actual pull strength on it, but just grabbing a piece of metal and pulling on there, you can feel it's, it's not just about the thickness there. It is actually stronger. And these will fit. These are, they're, they're two different heights, but I think if I stick with one rotor matched to its cap, to the housing, I, I think it's gonna fit. So I'm gonna drop this, uh, this rotor with the stronger magnets into this new 500 watt generator and see what happens. So not a ton more than we were, yeah. like just almost indistinguishable from what we had. Okay, so even with more powerful magnets, this thing still is not very impressive. We're going at double the wind speed that the thing is specified for, really. And it's still only putting out a fraction of the power that the that the math says it should. If we use that same formula for wind power, even taking away the bets limit, there still should be 
thousands of watts available on the front of this vehicle for a turbine this diameter. So there, there's something hugely wrong here that we need to figure out because BUILD stands for Better Understanding Involves Learning and Doing. So we are going to do this thing. That's all for now. Be sure to click like and subscribe and turn on notifications. Turn on notifications. I'm Quint and Grant with another one of our builds. Thanks for watching.